Well, this was a big travel summer for the Hawk family. We were literally coast to coast. We started off the summer in California and finished off with my family in New Jersey, and we went up to Vermont, and then we traveled a few places in between. And we found that we became very thankful for our GPS units. And we don't actually have the units now, but we have our phones. And you have Google Maps, and you have Siri, so Apple Maps. And when we were in California, we were driving up from San Diego to see a baseball game at Angel Stadium. And if you've ever been in California, or I'm sure that you have heard, there is horrendous traffic there all times of the day, every day. And so the good thing about these new GPS units is that they'll tell you where the traffic is. So we have our GPS unit, and we're traveling up, and my husband decides that he is not happy with the route that one GPS unit is taking us, that he doesn't really trust that that's where we need to be going, and he doesn't trust that that is the fastest way. So he has one on his phone. He says, at least bring up the directions in Google Maps now, and let's see which is the best. So we had this dueling GPS units, because we weren't really trusting that either one was going to get us there correctly and in the shortest amount of time. Now, it's funny, because it did start me thinking that I have some serious trust issues if I cannot trust a GPS unit and that we need two. But in all seriousness, thinking about these trust issues and how people had steered me wrong or let me down. I mean, it happens all the time. People let us down. We let other people down. Maybe it's dishonesty. Maybe it's by accident. But it happens, and our trust in people is diminished. And it's maybe a little bit like the clip here from Duck Dynasty. I know I've jumped on the Duck Dynasty bandwagon, but it's very funny. And in this particular clip, Willie, who's the CEO of the company, has told his staff that they are going on a retreat, a hunting retreat, which is what they normally do. But this is where they end up. Hey man, I'm glad you called. This is exactly what we're designed oh, this for. Is, they're going to get into it. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Guys, this is our first element today. A deer stand. <laughs> I can go no, get my bow right now. Yeah. That's not a deer stand. Don't, don't yeah. I need to be up there, you know, a little bit higher for deer stand. I know this probably looks like a deer stand. This is actually what we call a trust fall. This is an event that will help you guys really get a chance to see the level of trust you share between each other. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I come up here this morning trusting that we was going on, on a hog hunt or a turkey hunt, and then here I am talking to a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> so to say I have got a little trust issue with him is an understatement. Sure. What am I actually supposed to do here? Si, you would walk up to the top of this platform, turn and face this tree. And I want you to just fall back and let us catch you. <laughs> we got you, Si. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we got it. Si, it's going to change your life. That's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid <laughs> it's going to put me in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> but now I feel like Si's at the age where if we don't catch him, <laughs> it's over. This is going to be great. This is going to be absolutely great. Are we really going to do this? Seriously, we're going to do this? Si needs you to catch you got it, Si. This is called being stupid together. Si, I want you to say trusting, because hey, I want you... Why don't I just go ahead and get down the ladder? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The last thing I want to do is fall, hoping these idiots will catch me. Here we go, Si. I'm going to hit the ground. This is the dumbest... <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So the end of the story is that Sai does indeed fall, and they do catch him safely. But then it um, pans back to Sai, who says, trusting, falling. I pity the world if this is what it takes to trust people. Friends, when we put our trust in anyone or anything else, we are setting ourselves up for disappointment. When that's where we're putting our trust completely. So this led me to ask myself, do I project this onto God? Do I project my trust issues onto Him? Because in some ways, it's really harder to trust God, isn't it? Because he's not here in flesh and blood. And it's also difficult sometimes to trust him when we feel like he's let us down. Maybe he hasn't answered prayer in the way that we would like, or maybe we find ourselves questioning, why is it that a good God lets bad things happen? Now, we're not going to tackle that question this morning. That's for Pastor Eric to do uh, at another time. (laughs) But I do want to look at trusting God. How is it that we can trust God? What does it look like in our lives? And how do we know that we can trust Him? And I want to start off before we dig into our passage this morning, I want to start off by saying this is one of the very first ways that we can trust God, by knowing His Word, by knowing what it says in the Scriptures about God, about His truth. Friends, this is the starting point. And I pray this morning that you might be inspired and that you will go and you will look at the other stories in here, the other accounts of how God is faithful and why we can trust him. Because I'll tell you, when we go to the scriptures and we get to know God better and better, we'll be able to trust him more and more. And he will become so intimately involved in our lives that we'll be able to trust him no matter what season we find ourselves in. And I read something very profound in one commentary, and the commentator said, we should remember that God's sovereignty extends to each moment of our life. Otherwise, our trust in him will be limited to only those times when he meets our expectations. So we trust God as we get to know him better and better from his scriptures. And then our passage this morning gives us some very important reasons why we can trust God. The first way, we can trust God, we can trust Jesus because he loves us. Jesus makes it very clear in this passage, that he loves this family. It starts from the very beginning by referring to Lazarus not by name, but referring to Lazarus as the one Jesus loves. And then again in verse 5, John reminds us that Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So two times in the very beginning of this passage, we're hearing that Jesus loves these people. And I truly believe that we could insert even our own names into these verses. We are the ones whom Jesus loves. And I did find it very interesting that John felt the need to remind us of this from the get-go. And perhaps we need that reminder because we see in the story that Jesus doesn't just drop everything immediately and rush right off. The text tells us that he stayed where he was for two days. And I also find it interesting that the message from the sisters didn't say, come. 
They just tell him their problem and trust him to do something. Now, we'll see a little bit later that that trust falters, which is natural. But right here, there is the deep sense that Jesus loves his people. Incidentally, Jesus would not have made it even if he had left right away. The text tells us that Lazarus had been dead four days by the time Jesus got there. And if you do the math, the messengers would have taken a day to reach Jesus, and Jesus waited two days and then took a day to reach Bethany, which makes Lazarus' time of death before, well, on the day that the messengers left. So there was absolutely no way that Jesus could have made it. But still, reading this might be disturbing to some people. If Jesus really did love us, why would he have waited two days? Jesus' delays always hurt. And his delays may cause us to think that he doesn't care or it make us, might make us feel abandoned. And we do hear that here in this passage. Martha greets him with a, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then again, Mary says the same thing, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then some of the Jews in verse 37 say again, couldn't this man who, have, who had healed the blind man have kept this man from dying? So again and again and again. Which leads us to our next point. We can trust Jesus because he always does show up. It may not be our timing, but his timing is perfect. And his timing is what's best. Writer James Baldwin says, the Lord doesn't always seem to get there when we want him, but when he arrives, he's always on time. If you notice here, it's Martha who gets it this time, as opposed to the other story of Mary and Martha where she doesn't quite get it. When active Martha comes out, she meets him with the complaint, but immediately you see her faith kick in. And her trust in Jesus really trumps the resentment that she has initially. She still loves Jesus, and she shows that by trusting him. She says, but I know that even now God will give whatever you ask. And then she goes on to give the beautiful and perfect statement of faith, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who has come into the world. She still doesn't quite get that he can do much more than heal the sick. But in Jesus' perfect plan and in his perfect time, he will raise the dead. So we see here that we can trust Jesus because he'll always show up. One um, of the best black preachers that I heard, I heard when I was in Philadelphia. And I'll never forget him saying, when we ask the question, why God, when bad things happen, we're asking the completely wrong question. The question that we should be asking is, where, God? Where are you? Because God is always right there in the midst of the pain and in the midst of the struggle and the trial. Always stuck with me. So we know that we can trust Jesus because he always, always shows up. But he also knows the depth of our pain. God became flesh and dwelt among us, John 1.14 tells us. 
He became nothing and took on human likeness and humbled himself to death, even on a cross. And we read that in Philippians 2. Verse 33 and 38 tell us that Jesus was deeply moved. Another way to translate this is he was deeply agitated, intensely agitated in his spirit. And then the shortest verse of the Bible, that Jesus wept. So we see here he is intensely agitated. He is weeping. But I don't believe that he was weeping and deeply agitated because he was sad that Lazarus had died. I believe that he was grieved because he could see clearly the effect of sin and brokenness and depth. He could see that effect with the death of Lazarus. He could see that effect on the grieving people around Lazarus. He might have wept also because he could see clearly the lack of faith and trust that the Jews had. And this connects us directly to the final reason in this passage that we can trust Jesus. We can trust Jesus because he is the resurrection and the life. Jesus' raising of Lazarus was the precursor to his own death. It was pointing to his own death and resurrection, this all-powerful miracle. Jesus is the only one in all of history who took upon himself that punishment and that pain that human beings deserve. There's not one other world religion that can offer that. One must earn God's favor or earn God's blessings by the things that they do. But for us, because Jesus is the resurrection and the life, he has conquered that sin. He has conquered that death for us. And when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, the one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. When he says that, that is one of the main reasons that we can trust him. In verse 26, the all-important question that follows this proclamation this I am statement. Because if you go back and read in John, any time Jesus gives one of these I am statements, I am the vine, you are the branches, I am the resurrection and the life, he follows this up with a question. He follows it up with a challenge. The question he asks Martha is, do you believe this? In fact, six times in this passage, Jesus talks about believing. Do you believe? Do you trust? Before he raises Lazarus, he prays that people would believe. So that's the question for us this morning. Do you believe? Do you trust? What would it look like in our lives if we did trust? If we did truly believe that all of these things about Jesus were true? Well, there are countless numbers of ways, and that's a challenge for all of us as we leave here. What would it look like in my life if I truly trusted? Some of the ways that I thought of. When we trust, we are not as anxious. We do not worry as much. One of the most powerful experiences that I have had was 
with a woman at First Pres, where we were, an older woman, and she had been tired for a while, but she was also caring for her husband who had Alzheimer's, and she had a cold that she couldn't get rid of. Well, finally, when she went to the doctor, he told her that she had a fatal form of leukemia and that she had about a week to live. Well, Margaret was probably the calmest and most peaceful person I had ever known, especially in that circumstance. She said, okay. She gathered her family around her. She gathered her friends around her. She wrote her funeral sermon. I mean, her funeral service, not the sermon. But she wrote her funeral service, and she said, I know Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I'm ready to go meet him. I've never experienced such peace with someone. And she did live only a week after her diagnosis, but she was ready to go be with the Lord. So when we trust in Jesus, we too can have that freedom from anxiety, and we can have that peace. Other ways that trusting in Jesus, what, what it might look like in our lives. When we trust in Jesus, maybe we won't become angry so quickly when we don't get our own way. When we trust in Jesus, maybe we will be freed up to give more. When we trust Jesus, maybe we will be able to show greater compassion for people around us. When we trust Jesus, maybe we'd be able to turn the other cheek and really let vengeance be the Lord's. Again, I don't know how it will look for each one of us because that will be different. But God knows that when we trust him, our lives will be peace-filled. And he knows that we will be able to live the way he created us to live. But even more importantly, when we trust Jesus and when we live in this way, we are showing Jesus that we love him. In fact, in the entire Gospel of John, Trusting Jesus is one of the main ways that his disciples show that they love him. Few things give Jesus greater pleasure than when we trust him, when we believe him. Trusting Jesus, my friends, is one of the most basic ways that we can please him and show him our love. So how will that look? for us this week, this month, in the month ahead. If Jesus were to ask you, do you believe this? What will your response be? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.